Crit Jake back with another Vikings reaction. Today we'll be reacting to season two, episode nine, The Choice. And we're almost at the season finale. Things have been getting crazy, so I want to get right into it. Let's go. Caesar had sent his cavalry a little in advance and was following with the rest of his forces. The battlefront was not formed according to rules of military theory but as necessitated by the emergency and the sloping ground of the hillside. So, King Eckbert is trying to get strategy from the Romans actions. since they conquered everything, the basically. The 10th legions were on the left and discharged a volley of spears at the Atrobates. Yes, always thinking, always using the terrain. I think that's exactly what he's doing. Your behavior has made it very difficult to talk peace or to negotiate with King Egbert. Yep. I never had any intention it was Horik. of negotiating with King Egbert. I thought you were aware of that. I only want revenge. I want to kill King Egbert. And then perhaps I shall talk to him. If we defeat Egbert in battle, he may be prepared to offer us more. In terms not only of gold, but of land. This I don't think so. good faith. Yeah, what it is was. Good faith? Why should there Even be though he did kind of backstab them the first time. What do you say, Toki? They worship a false god. They're fleece and vermin. I'll go myself and talk to him. You will not divide our forces, Earl Ragnar. You seem to forget I am king. This power struggle we'll keeps getting worse and tomorrow. worse. It seems nothing could harm Balder. Everyone rejoiced that it was impossible to harm Balder. All except Loki. The sly one who watched with distaste and impatience. And it sickened him to see how Balder was immune from all sorts of attacks. Yes. The sly one knew he had to find a way to kill him. Floki is going to conspire with King Hort to kill Bjorn. Who are these gods? What world are we living in? Oh my god. Go down to them. I think we should wait. I'm not yeah. The enemy is there. Horik, you're a dumbass. It's a trap. Oh my god. Let all his guys go. Ragnar's so right. He's showing you that force of men, so you go down to them, and then out of the trees or something, a larger force is going to come and attack you. Let's see, though. They have a lot of guys, actually. Yeah, see Ragnar's looking around? Yep, yep. Knew it. So now you have... Two ways of people coming. Okay, but look over there, you dummy. Wow. Have they ever had to fight people on horseback? This is not looking good. Yep. The other way, too. Should have stayed up on the fucking hill. <sighs> now you have to worry about three different directions. Come on, Lagatha, please don't die. Wow, yeah, they've never had a deal with horses, I don't think. I'm, at least we haven't seen it. I really don't think so. He's starting to dislike Floki. Why are you doing this to me? Oh yeah, Rolo. Yeah, I never thought day would come when I would cheer on Floki, or cheer on Rolo, and then dislike Floki. And now his guys are gonna come in? I called this, like, way back in season one, I think, that one day they were gonna go, and there's gonna be way too big of an army for them. I called it way back in season one. Oh my god. Home oh, from this. What the fuck? What the fuck?
You're joking. He's not dead. He's not dead. Nope. Nope. Not laying myself. <laughs> no, he's not dead. Warwick. Why? Why? Oh my god. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's gonna be captured. That's what's gonna happen. If you're telling me that Rolo is dead... Wow. But see, Ragnar does want to talk. It's freaking Horik that made that dumbass decision. That's so cool and crazy. See, Athelstan is having such a crisis because he doesn't believe that they're false gods anymore because he's experienced it. He's felt it. You still think we annihilate our enemies? Hmm? Forgive me, King Ayla, but I might suggest that even the complete destruction of one northern army will not lead to the end of their incursions. Probably mm -hmm. quite the opposite. Yeah. Motivated by greed and by the need for revenge, they're very likely to return with renewed strength. And not just once or twice, but again and again. Yep, I turned so smart. Number. The only way to bring an end to these incursions is to negotiate an agreement that is good for both sides. Yes, but and that's what Ragnar wants to do. In the meantime, King Ayla, buying the services of these Northmen as mercenaries will certainly help us to overcome Mercia. Interesting take on it. Will, as you say, but someone has to take this offer to the pagans. That is, if they have not yet already sailed away. Indeed. Ugh. I want you all to know that Rollo is alive, wounded, but alive and being taken care of. He sure is. King Horik. Why have you come, Athelstan? Did you escape? I came here to talk to you. King Egbert sent you. You do his bidding. You are one of them. He offers you a chance for peace. He wants to talk of many things with you. Good things. Yeah, he yes. actually does. And then kill us. No. no not, I swear. Oh. I know him. You are his dog. You lick his fingers. You lick his arsehole. <laughs> He's my least favorite character. I really like your new clothes, Athelstan. And your hair. Very nice. Is he prepared to offer us a hostage? Yes. He wants to reassure you in any way he can of his honest intentions. Then we will meet him. Who are you to say? Oh, Do my not God. Need to come. I know I will go. And if Egbert means to kill us... So be it. Yeah, that's a way to look at it for Hork. Who have you chosen for our hostage? The son again? No. It did not seem just or right to place him in danger for a second time. Who then? Actually, you, King Ayla. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna own. Me? Well, except for myself, there is no one that the Northmen will place a higher value on than you. And they're bound to know the consequences if they should harm you in any way. Oh my god. It's also about He's playing right into Hork's manipulative oh, ways. Here. How can you trust him? <laughs> you talk about trust. You? What are you saying? Ooh. I am a trustworthy person. Oh shit. He called it out, man. They are very strong. Well, they live hard lives. Oh they my farm God. and they fight. And they do not fear death. He's just letting her. <laughs> this lady! He 
chose to come back. Oh, is that why he was like, oh, okay. It didn't hit me seeing uh, Eckbert down there. Sorry about that. We can be honest with each other, can we not? Hmm? We know each other well enough. We know the things we like and those we hate. So do I. We share many things. Many ideas. Feelings. About the earth. And the gods. Am I not right? Yes. I have a proposition to put to you. Oh my god, what a good, crazy, amazing episode. I loved it. That was one of my favorite episodes, I think. Um, a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's get right into it. Um, the power struggle, it's still going on between Horik, Rat, and Ragnar. Horik has never had to rule or be partnered with someone this strong and this well known and this smarter than him. I really think Horik knows how much smarter Ragnar is and it offends him. It makes him feel small. That's kind of the thing with those kinds of guys. Their ego is kind of the only thing they have. He's king. Ooh, he's so big. But next to Ragnar, he's really nothing. It's Ragnar and that guy standing next to him. I think that's really the issue with this power struggle because he always has a problem when he does stuff without talking to him and stuff like that. Um, Floki. This is probably one of my biggest heartbreaks of the show. Floki was my second favorite character behind Lagatha, and he is slowly going down into my least favorite characters if he actually is going through this thing with Hork. And I'm so glad Ragnar notices it, and I'm so glad that he called him out, and he's talking about, oh, trust. You want to talk about trust? Badass. I'm so glad he called Loki out on it. Um... Oh yeah, and then Ragnar brought up the prophecy that the seer said that Bjorn will marry the daughter of a king. So, I'm very confused with his love interest right now because she's definitely not the daughter of a king. Unless they're going to throw us for a crazy loop. No one tell me, but... So that means she's either going to die, Ragnar's going to either force him to not marry her and marry someone else, or they're just going to have they're going to split. I don't know what's happening with that, but that seer usually has it all right. I mean, the eagle with Jarl Borg, so who knows about that. Athelstan, we keep seeing his struggle, his pow his struggle with who he is, who he, what he believes in, and I love the scene. I don't think I was able to fit it into my um, reaction, but I love the scene when he was praying and he was talking about how he knows that in his religion they call them false gods but are they false because he feels them he's seen things and all this and he gives this really good quote to Ragnar when they first talk again he's like I feel my god in the gentle rains but I also feel Thor in the thunder which I thought was a really cool quote and it kind of describes Athelstan's character crisis perfectly and I am Athelstan's climbing up the ladder for me. I love his character. He's very complex. He might be one of the more complex characters of the show, maybe besides Ragnar. Um, maybe even more complex. Or they just, I don't know. But I really like Athelstan and his character and the way he um, shows. And act, the actor is great, by the way. And the way they written in the things he says and what he does and the decisions he makes and I'm very surprised he actually went back with Ragnar. I thought he was going to stay back with King Eckbert but I think we're seeing that his his heart is truly with the Vikings now so that's awesome. Um, the battle scene. The battle scene was awesome. I don't think we've ever seen a bat. They, I don't think we've ever seen them face someone on horseback. Is that true? Because the whole thing with the shield wall is like bracing yourself, staying upwards, being able to protect yourself. But those horses are just ramming through, annihilating and annihilating them. And who walked right into the trap? King Horik. That guy needs to go. He needs to die in the season finale. I want it to happen. He does just doesn't understand the thing the way how to do things, basically. It, like, And Ragnar said, no, I think we should wait here. And Horik's like, 
No, that's a small fleet down there. We should go get them right now. Yeah, because that's all the soldiers they have. Yep, exactly. He walked right into that trap. And we knew even more so that they were walking into a trap since they showed earlier um, King Egbert listening to Athelstan Reed Caesar's um, strategy. So he took that right off of the book, the coming them coming out of nowhere and trapping them on all sides. So that was crazy. Um, Auslog made... I, that's the one name I don't think I have. The Slave Girl, a free woman. So that was very cool. I think it's very few things I've liked um, that Auslog has done. And that is one of them. I thought that was very sweet. But I don't know if it's for herself. So Bjorn likes her more. Who knows with that one. But yeah. Um, what else happened here? Oh, Eckbert. So, remember when we first had the battle when they were in Wessex and they caught those two soldiers and they said, you're in King Eckbert's land. And Ragnar said, what do they say about King Eckbert to Athelstan? And Athelstan, he said, he's just like you. And they have been showing that perfectly. King Eckbert knew in that bathhouse scene, he was like, no, I think we proved our point with that battle. Now it's time to negotiate. So smart. He's the smartest one in the room, just like when Ragnar is with his guys. He's the smartest one in the room. I don't know if I completely trust Eckbert. He has proven before that he will go back on his word. So, I don't know. It sounded like a too-good-to-be-true deal. So, I think he might use some some more, like, Roman tactics and try to knock them out even more once they get settled on the farmland or once uh, just a... A smaller army comes over. I don't know if I can completely trust Egbert, but we'll see about that. Oh, speaking of King Egbert, that other king, that that partnership is not going to work. It's just like Ragnar and Hork in some ways. Like when you get men who think they're most important, and you have to partner with someone else that thinks they're the most important, it just doesn't work. You just clash and clash and clash. So we have so many character conflicts in the show right now. We have Floki and Ragnar. Flo or Floki and Horik, Horik and Ragnar, King Egbert and the other king, the other king with the Vikings, King Egbert with the Vikings, Athelstan with Egbert and the Vikings, which way he wants to go, like there's so many conflicts, and then the Princess of Mercia doesn't know that they're planning to take over her land, so who knows what's going to end up going on here, I'm super excited to get into the finale, I think I'm going to end up posting that one today too, and we'll just start season three next week so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed my discussion post down below what you thought of this episode and i'll see you next time